My name is Stephanie. I teach grade two at St. Anne Elementary. It's a small school. We have 150 kids. Uh, next year we have, uh, we're actually growing. We have a full day kindergarten, first time in 10 years. And we have a one, a one, two, and a two. Uh, the grade twos are going to zoo school. And so part of my project was kind of stemming from that. And part was from a conference I went to last week where I really wanted to integrate numeracy throughout all the subject areas. So I really want to look at it like literacy as opposed to just having a math class. So how would that look like? So based on having zoo school as a reference, because we're supposed to use it all year long, the theme I came up with is caring for our world. And basically this is a starting point, but the way I plan to attack it when I go back to school is it's going to be very student led. So when we first ask the questions, I know in the back of my mind where I want to go with it and I know what outcomes, but really how they do it is going to be up to them. So I'm going to kind of see which way they're going to take it. And so just uh, go back. There we go. So these are kind of the main questions we're going to be looking at. So different ways of caring for animals. So we have caring in the wild, at home as far as pets, and then in captivity. And as opposed to just looking at like, oh, I like pets or, you know, zoos are cool, I want them to go deeper and look at like topics like endangered species and even captivity versus conservation, right? Like are zoos the best choices for animals or zoos, you know, look at something like a conservation park versus SeaWorld, you know, and there's a controversy around SeaWorld, there's a controversy around the, the sea lions at West Edmonton Mall, right? Lucy at Edmonton Valley Zoo. Um, so I really want them to look at deeper issues that go beyond just like, yay, we're going to the zoo. So um, these are kind of overarching questions that will kind of guide them as we're starting. Big ideas, obviously using our 21st century learning skills, but Basically, it goes cross-curricular, so through the four cores, so science, we have hot and cold temperatures, so I want to look at, you know, zoos around the world. How does that affect, how does temperature affect the animals you have in your zoo? Again, going back to Lucy, she's an African elephant, how does living in Edmonton affect her, right? So how does climate affect the choices you make for having at your zoo? Um, how do zoos make the decision? Social studies, in grade two, we learn about Saskatoon, Iqaluit, and Metagan. So I want to look at, as we're looking at communities around the world, will tie back to those three specific communities. Do they have zoos? How are the animals in Iqaluit different than the animals in Saskatoon versus Metagan? Three very different communities, different climates, different zones. So how are they same? How are they different? How do they compare to here? Uh, math, again, going back to my numeracy goal, all like counting obviously goes through everything. That's, a, that's an easy one. You count the animals, you count them. <laughs> but basically measurement, um, how do sizes of cages, like what kind of animal, what kind of size of cage do they need? And knowing that, you know, a bigger animal needs a bigger cage. So you're comparing masses, weight, size, graphing, you can do um, favorite animal. What are the types of animals? So in these climate zones, what are the most common animals? What are the least common animals? Geometry, you have your shapes. So now we're building. So this goes through art as well. You can build our enclosures. We can build and create animals. And with grade two, we also learn about bugs. So incorporating the bugs in the different climates as well. So using 2D and 3D shapes and patterns, just there's so many patterns in nature, right? So how do, what are those patterns? Why do they have patterns for defense mechanisms, for protection, to, you know, for mating? So all the different patterns you see that way. And language arts obviously just ties through everything. We'll be reading, research, researching, um, having conversations. Um, so as far as assessment, the tools that I'm going to be using, the main one I want to integrate this year was Minecraft. Because um, last year I focused a lot on Skype and Skyping, so this year I want to, and I kind of touched on coding, so I really wanted to, I had all my little kids who were like, tell me about Minecraft, and I have no clue what my, how to use Minecraft. I played with it, and I was like, I don't know. So, but basically the, kind of the end, after we do all this research and we all bring it together, they're going to build their ideal zoo. So using their skills that they learned in measurement, using their skills, their research skills, their habitats, their climates, they're going to build their ideal environment. So whether we do this in a group of three, ideally I'd like to partner with another school and kind of share out those um, as far as like sharing the games. So that's going to be the big one. So we're using measurement, they're using the ideas of building, and they're collaborating within the school and outside the school. Skype in the classroom. Basically we're going to use this again to connect to other classrooms because they can fe get feedback, right? What's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on that? I also want to contact as many zoos as possible, so there's lots of virtual field trips you can do with zoos they have and you can visit them. If without the virtual field trip I'd like to contact like the zoo directors, staff, veterinarians, 
Um, me and my daughters volunteer at the Humane Society here in the city. So that's another place I want to go to because it's all different perspectives, all caring for animals in different ways, right? So, and again, I want to get the different types of zoos, like you get a, a whale trainer versus a, you know, a conservationist versus a veterinarian versus the, the janitor who scoops up the poop, you know? <laughs> like, so I'd like to get opinions from as many people as we can. And basically assessment from that, this comes to questioning techniques. You know, we started a little bit yes, last year with the mystery number and they're kind of asking yes or no questions. But this year my real focus is going to get them, how do you ask good questions? How do you ask good research questions? And then how do you listen to the answers? Because a lot of times they can come up with questions and they're like, oh. And then the next kids like ask the exact same questions. So <laughs> it's always fun when they're seven year olds. <laughs> but basically I want to get them really focusing on what is a good question? How do you get information? And what information is important? When you're interviewing the director of a zoo, is it important to know if how old he is or how you know sometimes that could be a good question but basically I want to get them beyond those superficial questions and then other tools that we're going to use sway would be used to um, they're going to choose a topic and again this will evolve as we're going along I don't know how it's going to look but they're going to pick a topic they can use it to teach someone else they can use it as a presentation another thing that I thought of that I didn't actually put on here yet when we were talking is they can do a broadcast, right? What if they created a news report on the endangered animals of this, right? So have a little green screen program, so that's something else we can incorporate too. Edmonton Catholic, what's nice is all of our students have access to Office 365. So using those tools in Microsoft Word and Excel, they can, doc they can collaborate together and they can work, do their research together on Word. They can create graphs in Excel. They also have access to their emails. So um, they have email accounts, and, I just, and with my grade twos, we just did at the end of the year last year. So even that, like emailing each other, and again within the district, kind of asking questions that way. Maybe they can find another person that they can actually email their own questions to. Uh, Photoshop, uh, I threw that in there just because I like Photoshop, so <laughs> I like to incorporate it in. But that, what I was, the idea with that was that they would take images, um, because from the language arts perspective, they're going to create nonfiction and fiction writing works. So they can create some images in Photoshop that they'll be able to use, for example, in Story Jumper to create a story. So they can create a fact book. And I'll be looking for that their facts are accurate, that they're not just making stuff up. <laughs> and then also creating fiction books, right? So what's a, you know, a day in the life of and the ape at the zoo or you know, incorporating called the one and only, right? One and only Ivan? Yeah, like incorporating a novel study like that where now they can, again, connecting the real world to the, to the fiction world and kind of bringing it all together. And again, Scratch, I kind of developed a love for last year too. So <laughs> this will be all kind of this. We don't go to zoo school until November 30th. So my plan is that this will take place, you know, ideally over the first two months and it may even go until after Christmas um, because there are so many levels and aspects to it. It's not, and it incorporates all subject areas. Because we're a Catholic school too, it also, another teacher is teaching the religion for me, but incorporating that, the Catholic dimension into that too with creation and just caring for our world. So um, as far as community connections, we will be doing the zoo school, like I said, um, and then using fresh grade. That's a new thing I discovered last week <laughs> as a Sarah. But it's a really great assessment tool because you can take photos, videos, uh, anecdotal notes, and you can do voice memos. And there's a teacher app, a parent app, and a student app. And what it does is right there as they're working, you can you input your class into it. As they're working, I can take a picture of these three people and then you tag all three of them and it automatically inserts that video, that photo, that note into all three of their digital portfolios. So now you have a digital portfolio and you're not copying and like cutting and pasting into each folder. It's automatic. So when you click on their name, you can see every bit of assessment. So as they're working, you can take a picture of their work and it goes into there. So now you're not saving binders or something like that. And then the, with the parent app, you can email them out and they have full access to their child's portfolio so they can see all their work and they can, they can comment on it as well. And there's a student app where the students, you know, if they go home, they're doing something at home, they can take a picture of it, upload it, it goes into their portfolio and you can comment back and forth that way. So that's a brand, like I said, I just learned about it last week and I was like, it's so cool. <laughs> so that's uh, something I want to incorporate this year. And those are just two little videos I found. Um, Minecraft the Ultimate Educate, this guy is very animated. It's a really cool video. <laughs> He's very passionate about Minecraft. And then just kind of Skype in the classroom, the benefits of it.